Hey, welcome back to Five and Five with Mac Lackey. This is where I answer five of your burning questions in just about five minutes over a great cup of coffee. So I actually had a really interesting interview this week with a group that is uh, doing a super summit. And so they're bringing together uh, experts and founders from all over the world to talk about doing good and making money at the same time. And during this summit interview, I got a couple good questions that I wanted to share. So the first was, Mac, how do you gain confidence to let people handle important tasks in your business? And for context, I was talking about freedom. And so as an entrepreneur, as a founder, if you want freedom in your life, one of the biggest things you can do is make sure that the business runs in your absence. And to do that, it requires people. And so my answer to the question was, I am a really big fan of hiring talented, driven people, but effectively throwing them in the deep end early. I want them to be able to sink or swim and good people swim. And so my answer is give people the challenge, tell them what your expectations are, but let them run the business in your absence. And so the best way to do that is throw them in the deep end. I got a great question from Carlos via Facebook. And the question was, how do I create my business network? And as a young entrepreneur in particular, it was really important to me because I didn't really have a pedigree or a background that gave me this instant network. And I wanted to find important people that I could learn from and I could hopefully uh, build a network with over time. And the way that I did that and the way that I would recommend everyone do it is by focusing on adding value first. So rather than thinking about people in your network as people that you can get something from, think about it in terms of where you can give. And almost at any level of business, if you're adding value to someone, they're going to absolutely want you to be a part of their network. So the first thing you can do is focus on adding value to other people. It makes a huge difference. Okay, a great question from LinkedIn. I actually did not catch the name. Apologies for that. Um, but the question was, should I try and find a co-founder for my business? And I get this question a fair amount because as founders, we often have an expertise of some kind. Maybe we're an engineer, maybe we are business experts, or we are just more talkative and therefore we're going to be in sales. And oftentimes we'll hear, do we need someone to round out that skill set? Do we need, if we're outward facing, do we need an internally facing person? And the reality is partnerships are really hard. So unless you have an existing relationship with someone that you want to go into business with, or you have a really well-rounded team that you want to start a company with, I don't think you need to go out after the fact and add a co-founder. Okay, an email question came in from James. I like this question a lot, James. Do I need to change my pitch from my personal vision to make it more compelling to investors? Um, and I would actually extend that a little bit to say a lot of people think that they need to add some buzzwords or make something really, really current in their thinking. If you're passionate about a business, you do not need to change your business for anyone. You need to let the market tell you if you're onto something by validating your idea, which means you have customers that want to pay you for what you're doing. That's the only validation you really need. Customers, people that are going to use your products and services. Do not take your existing business. If you have a retail store and you try to turn it into some hot e-commerce thing or you try to add blockchain or some new buzzword to it, you're just really taking your vision and diluting it down. And so don't fall victim to feeling like you need to add buzzwords or new things to a business that you're already passionate about. That's a really good question. Last question was an email from Justin. Should I require people to sign an NDA before hearing the details of my startup? I am asked this question every week. Uh, I've been asked to sign NDAs. I get asked, should people require NDAs? And the reality is non-disclosure agreements, which is what the NDA stands for, um, are typically not required and actually create a little bit of a hurdle for you and your business. Investors, particularly sophisticated investors, will not sign an NDA. So even if you think you have some ultra top secret uh, product or service, you're not likely to get sophisticated people signing an NDA. If they're out in the market like I am and they're getting hundreds of emails a day, they're exposed to lots of ideas, they're exposed to lots of founders, lots of 
different entrepreneurs. And so it's very unlikely that they're going to be comfortable signing a non-disclosure agreement. But more importantly, the reality is people don't have time to pursue your idea. So even though I hear some amazing ideas from people, and technically I guess I could take that idea and, and run with it, I'm busy doing my own things, right? So I would take the fear away and spend more time thinking about can you get in front of the right people and share your idea so that you can get them excited. Then they're going to want to support you, whether that's through investment, whether it's through mentorship, or whatever the case may be. All right, that's it for this week's 5 and 5 with Mac Lackey. Be sure to ask your questions. If you're sitting out there and you have a burning question, I would love to try to answer it for you. Find me on the socials at Mac Lackey and on MacLackey.com. We'll see you next week.